Now, from the makers of Coldwater Omo... In the dark cellar of the Special Administration Building at St. Catherine's, the Brigadier and Major Parsons were disturbed in their work and startled by Sergeant Hearn, who entered with unseemly haste, tore across the floor, almost forgetting the soldierly formalities, and skidded to a stop in front of them. He just remembered to throw a salute before he said, Intruders in the area, sir. Unauthorized. Two men. Got away, sir. Got away? Report, Sergeant. And make it coherent? Yes, sir. Two unauthorized men, sir. Stole a vehicle, sir. Well, they can't get very far that way. All roads are blocked. Which way were they headed? I'm not sure, sir. I think they went to the northern part of the town. No, they were. One man's name is Steed. The other, Merlin. Merlin? That's all we need, a blasted sorcerer. Major! Sir? You had a bit of handle this. A full platoon. Yes, sir. I used method in tracking them. Cross-plot the entire area and comb every inch. Yes, sir. Uh, do you want them alive for questioning, sir? I most certainly do not shoot them. After a proper firing squad has been convened. That's the way to deal with them. Give them a fair trial and shoot them. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Coldwater Omo has really powerful cleaning action. Mrs. Senior discovered this. My husband wears overalls to work, and they come back very sort of greasy and dirty. My girl actually does them by hand in the tub, but she uses cold water Omo, and they're fine, and they come up perfectly clean. They say once an Omo user, always an Omo user. I've stuck to cold water Omo, and I'm still using it. It's the strongest washing powder I've used. Goldwater Omo cleans best. Keep your complexion soft and young looking with the creamy, moisturizing lather of Lux. Like Claudia Cardinale, choose Lux. Lux, a beauty treatment as you bathe. <laughs> this story in which John Steed and Jimmy Merlin find themselves an ally but still can't unravel the mystery of what's going on in St. Catherine's the morning after. John Steed was determined. He'd found Jimmy Merlin and regardless of what was going on, he wasn't going to release him. Admittedly, this was a severe setback. He wasn't sure when Merlin would try to make a break for it. It meant watching him and whatever was round the next corner. And driving the armoured car was difficult with only one hand. Steed decided to park the thing. What's the idea? I, I'd hoped you were going to get us out of here. I've told you. I'm not leaving Mrs. Peel. Be realistic, Merlin. If this whole town is under martial law, they'll have barriers up on all the roads out of it. Uh, I suppose that's true. But, but look, Steed, I'm your prisoner, right? Right. And I'm your responsibility, right? Right. Then you're supposed to take care of me, right? Wrong. Uh, but the rules say... There are no rules in this business, Merlin. You should know that. Now, you want to find out what's going on, don't you? No. Well, there you are, then. Come on. Steed dragged Merlin out of the parked car. They walked stealthily down the street and round the corner. There, not more than a few yards away, was a radio van, the one they'd seen earlier. The round circular aerial had stopped revolving. This made Steed wonder if there was anyone in the van. He pulled Merlin forward. I'm going to try the rear doors. Steed reached the van, grasped the rear door handle, and jerked it open. Oh! Oh, well... You might have knocked. Uh, what's up, miss? 
Shall I clobber him? Yates, a stocky young cockney, jumped from the van and approached Steed and Merlin. He held a large, heavy spanner in one hand. No, no good. It's a fair cop. I suppose it isn't any use asking you two not to destroy the film. Remember, it is more than a scoop. It's history. Confiscate it if you want. Lock it away, but please don't destroy it. After all, I could put this in the... The girl stopped. She noticed the handcuffs that linked Steed and Merlin together. What on earth's going on here? I wish someone would tell us. You... You mean you honestly don't know? No, no idea. You know, Yates, I think they're telling the truth. But it's fantastic. Well, it's not that fantastic. We've been knocked out for nearly 24 hours. Whatever has happened here at St. Catherine's happened then. And we missed it. Why, well, it's still incredible that you don't know. The old world knows. I do hate to think that the whole world has me at a disadvantage. <laughs> I won't tell you what's happened. I can do better than that. I can show it to you. Climb into the van. No. It's all right. This is no trickery. I'm on the level. All right. Come on, Merlin. It was tiny and cramped inside the van. Yates moved to a TV monitor at the far end and began flicking switches. I'm Jenny Thurston, by the way. Television news. We came in to cover the event, and then when everyone was ordered out of the area... Well, we stayed on. Against orders, of course. We've been sneaking around the streets, picking up what shots we can. Okay, miss. Ready for the playback. Switch it over. Right. This is the newscast you would have seen if you hadn't been asleep all day This yesterday. is Jenny Thurston. I'm standing here in the heart of St. Catharines. Cars are still pouring out of the town in their thousands. But jams are building up, and already owners are abandoning the private vehicles and hurrying away to the special coaches standing by for evacuation. It was difficult for me the to do this commentary. So much was going on. Special yes, troops. Thank you. Troops emergency has been proclaimed. Within 30 minutes, this town and the surrounding 50 square miles surrounding it will be evacuated. It will become a ghost area, empty save for the troops. The area is under martial law as from now. Ah, here you see the man who will remain in sole command, Brigadier Hanson. Oh, Hanson's Look at this truck, Strickland. Easy there, man. Uh, oh, yes, Miss Watson. Television news. Brigadier, are you satisfied that everyone, everyone has been warned to leave the area? We've, we've called on everyone. Yes, I'm satisfied. And how do you feel about staying on? I, I'm a soldier. I have a duty. <coughs> Clear that truck! Get moving there, man! We've got others arriving! Move! What I, what I would like to stress to the nation is that, is that there is no need to panic. We have everything under control. We know what we must do. And we shall do it. There you go, excuse me. You man, move that He truck. knows what he must do. Get that trick on. Brave oh, words from a brave man. Gently, sir. And there is the commission building. In there oh, lies the task he must breath. tackle. And the whole world will be waiting with bated breath to see the outcome of that task. If he succeeds, a royal welcome awaits him. If he fails, then he, his troops, this town, the countryside for 50 miles or more will cease to exist. Right, isn't it? The Eastern Hemisphere Trade Commission building. It was vacated recently, but its occupants left behind them a monster buried deep in the cellar. They left behind the atom bomb, which Brigadier Hansing and his men must attempt to defuse at once. And now I think we should pass on to the crowds and ask their opinion. The men over there for the coach. All right, Yates, yes, that's I'll enough. Say. Kill it. Yes, please. An atom bomb. But why? Who? No one's sure. The Trade Commission building was occupied by representatives of more than 20 countries. Your guess is as good as mine. I must I have a warhead deep in the middle of our own territory? Nice ace to have up one sleeve. How was it discovered? Pure fluke. Brigadier Hansen's one of the nuclear experts. He was staging some maneuvers in this area. His instruments registered radioactivity. He pinpointed the bomb. Ah, that explains a great deal. I should have thought he explained everything. So, Miss Thurston, you're here without authority, then? I'm afraid so. If we're caught, they'll... Shoot you. Oh, I think a firm reproof would be more in order. Uh, don't kid yourself. We've already seen how trigger-happy they are. Firing squads have already been at work. 
You've got to be joking. Uh, I'm afraid not. You mean they actually... They actually shot someone? Here in an English country town? There is a state of emergency. Did you hear that, Yates? Come on, we can't miss this. What is... No, 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 better still. You stay inside here. These two can ride with me in the front and show me the way. You can tell me more about yourself as we drive. I say, look here. No arguing. This could make the biggest story we've ever done. Well, come on. No time to lose. Jenny Thurston handled the vehicle with professional skill. She drove fast but well, following Steed's vague instructions and at the same time listening to him explain why he was still handcuffed to Jimmy Burley. And so, I can't let this man go. You understand? Sounds unbelievable to me. No more unbelievable than what's happening to us at this moment. No, I suppose not. It doesn't look criminal. Don't be fooled by his looks and easy charm. They're very deceptive. I say, I wished the devil you wouldn't keep discussing me as though I wasn't here. It, it's very embarrassing. I've only said nice things so far. All the same, it's embarrassing. I notice you haven't asked to hear my side of things. You haven't got a side of things. <laughs> Anything you tell Jenny will be calculated to foul up her tasks. Forget him, Jenny. Oh, I won't do that. Thank you. But I will be careful. It's round this corner, isn't it? Well, you've got to put up with it. You can't get out and walk. Hey, look, up ahead. Soldier. Looks like a major. It was Major Parsons. Alone. But with a drawn revolver. What now? Slow down. Slow down. About time I made myself known to the authorities. You sure that's safe? Don't worry. I'd have probably been sent into the area anyway. Hey, hey, Major. I'm John Steed, security clearance KR5. Might be able to give you a hand. No, no, don't stop. Come hey. suddenly stretched out a long leg and stabbed his foot over Jenny's foot on the accelerator. The van leapt forward. The wing caught the Major and sent him flying. Ah! Drive on, drive on, I tell you. You please, you drive on. What the devil do you think you're doing? You could have killed him. That, I recognize him. That's no Major Steve. He's no Major. What? That man is not British. His name's Parninsky. Gregor Parninsky. A cutthroat, a pirate, a, a mercenary. Are you sure? I'm quite sure. That man lying back there in the road unconscious is Parninsky, a Russian agent. Figure that one out, Steve. Lurch, Sam Lacey finishes washing his dog in just 17 minutes, 45 seconds. Well done, Sam. Play any other sports? I lift a pint of beer now and then. You look very fresh, Sam. What deodorant do you use? Shield for sportsmen, of course. Why? It works. Shield for sportsmen deodorant won't stick, sting, or stain. In aerosol or roll-on, it's made to keep sportsmen cool and dry. Think what it can do for you. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user, like Mrs. Bodington. My wash is beautiful, and I'm very proud of it. There's nothing like cold water Omo. No dirt can stand up to Omo. Over a million housewives have proved it. It cleans best. The Avengers. <laughs> Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omo.